Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo Academy, the show where we teach you how to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So if you want to get that, make sure you stay until the end. Also, if you do not own Luminar Neo, make sure you use the link in the description together with the discount code so you can get the best deal on your new purchase. And finally, we would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. So the Luminar Neo 1.2.0 is here, heavily focusing on its new HDR merge extension, as well as the dodge and burn tool. Now in the new Luminar Neo 1.2.0 update, Skylum introduced extensions. They are paid professional features that expand the capability of Luminar Neo. The first extension that is going to be released is the HDR merge which can merge up to 10 exposure bracketed images into a single HDR photo. HDR merge delivers a spectacular level of color enhancement, making the final result look as close as possible to what human eye can see. Moving on to the highly anticipated Dodge and Burn tool. It's finally back and you will be able to find it in a professional section of your main toolbar. Moving on and looking at some of the other improvements. Now the rotate and flip is now available directly from the catalog. Also the interface of the EXIF panel or information panel was improved and moved to new location. There is also a new interface for the catalog header. And now you're also able to export 8-bit and 16-bit PNG images. For those who are interested, they also improve Spanish localization. Now to make sure that we cover everything, Skylum also fixed 9 bugs across the Mac and Windows versions of Luminar Neo. If you want to see the full list of the updates, make sure you visit their website skylum.com slash what's new slash Luminar Neo. So that's it with the updates, now let's jump into the application and let me show you how to make sure that you have the latest version of Luminar Neo and if you don't, how to install it. Now, before we're going to continue, I want to quickly tell you about our brand new release of the Luminar Neo Masterclass. We have taken everything that we learned with over 100 videos on Luminar Neo here at YouTube and we have put it together. Our Masterclass contains 63 lessons with over 5 hours of training videos in 4K quality. It includes the Masterclass itself, as well as the bonus course focusing specifically on the HDR Merge plugin. Now, if you want to find out more about our Luminar Neo Masterclass, you can follow the link in the video or simply visit our website cleverphotographer.com slash learn Luminar. And now it's time to see how to update your Luminar Neo. Now, if you open your application and you've been prompt with the updating message, just follow it and you're good to go. However, if you haven't, First of all, we need to find out what version you're using. So for this, we're going to navigate to the top left corner of your screen and click on the Luminar Neo logo. Inside, click on About Luminar Neo and that will open this little window. Inside of the window, you can see your version. Now, I'm already using the new version 1.2.0. However, if you have a version below that, you need to update it. So let's close this window. And to update the Luminar Neo, you need to go back into the same location, click on the logo and click on check for updates. Now it's going to take a moment and most likely you're going to be prompt with a message to update it. Now, as I'm recording this video, prior to the release of the update, I'm not able to show you the actual version. However, I will show you how it's done on one of the previous updates. What you need to do is to go up to your toolbar and click on Luminar Neo. Inside of that, there is the check for updates button. So you click on that and it takes a second and then it prompts you with this message. 
the software update, a new version of Luminar Neo is available. And then Luminar Neo 1.0.7 is now available. You have 1.0.6. Would you like to download it now? So of course we would. So what we need to do is to click on install update. So now it's going to take a moment. As you can see, it's over four gigabytes big. So we let it run down and then we'll come back to it. After the download is finished, it's going to extract it and prepare it for this window ready to install. So now it's really simple. You just click on install and relaunch. Once the installation is over, it reopens the application and you will be ready to use it. So now we finish updating the software and it's time to jump into it and for me to show you how we can use all these updates and new features. And finally, here we are in Luminar Neo, where we're gonna be looking at all the new updates and features. Starting with the big one, we are looking at the HDR Merge plugin, or as Skylum call it, HDR Merge extension. So with the arrival of Luminar Neo 1.2.0 update, Skylum introduces extensions, which are going to be a paid professional features that expand the capabilities of Luminar Neo. For now, we have the HDR merged, but in the future, there are possibilities to add stuff like panorama stitching and so on. So as you can see, I am in the catalog module and I already have the HDR merge installed here. Once you install your update, you will get this little orange puzzle in the top left corner next to the Luminar Neo logo. You can click on that and you will see that that will open the new extensions window. For the moment, we have the HDR merged here and it's already installed. Now, if you want to see how to activate and install your HDR merge plugin, you should check out our new tutorial, which is available on our YouTube channel. Now, while we're here, it's worth to mention that the HDR merge plugin is a paid extension. So unless you are Luminar Neo subscriber, or you own Aurora HDR, you will have to pay a fee in order to get it into your computer. So now we are done here in the extensions panel, so we can close it and we can have a look closer at the HDR Merge plugin. By default, it goes into the new toolbar on the right side of your screen, and it's actually very simple to use. All you need to do is to select your bracketed images and then drag and drop them onto the plugin itself. They will appear there, and once you're happy with the setup, all you need to do is to click on Merge, and that will create a new HDR image. Once the HDR image is made, it by default goes into the HDR Merge folder, which is created in your picture or image folder inside of your documents. So as you can see, we have it already here, but there is nothing easier than just drag and dropping it back into the folder where you're going to use it. So let's go back to our sample files. And as you can see, we have the image ready here. One more thing worth to mentioning is that the image is in a TIFF file and you need to consider that when you're going to be doing the editing. Now, if you want to make your life a little easier, you can use one of our HDR presets that come with our Luminar Neo Power Bundle. And all you need to do then is to click and select the image, go into the presets, and used one of the presets here. So for example, our essential HDR presets work very well, or you can use something a little bit lighter by using our landscape presets. For example, this number three is also working very nicely on this type of image. Now, if you already own our Luminar Neo Power Bundle, make sure that you download these presets as they are already in the product. If you don't, just follow the link in the description or visit our website, cleverphotographer.com. Now let's go back to the catalog where we're going to continue with the update overview. Now, since we are still in a catalog module, let's talk about the new toolbar on the right side of our screen. Here we have the new HDR merge, which I already talked about. And just above it, we have the new EXIF panel. This is where all the information about your image are going to be shown. And I really like it as it's much bigger and much clearer. So now when you go through the images, you can see how the information changed. You can see the information about your camera and the camera setting, as well as the image resolution, size, and a format. Now, while you're here, you can also adjust the marking of the image, rotate the image around, and copy and paste your edit settings. When you're looking for a little bit more space and you are not using this panel, you can click on this little icon here and just hide it so you can have more space to review your images. 
another update will give you the possibility of rotating and flipping your image directly in the catalog module. All you need to do is to right click on your image and use one of these shortcuts here. So you have the rotate where you can rotate left and right and you have the flip where you can flip horizontally and vertically. So let's go out of this. Now this is it for the catalog module and it's time to move into the edit module where we look at the rest of the updates. So let's select this sample file and move into the edit module. In the edit module, we're going to be looking at two things. And the first one is the highly anticipated dodge and burn tool. The dodge and burn tool is located at the bottom of your main toolbar. And you can see that it's stored in the professional section. To use it, all you need to do is to click on it to open it and then adjust the sliders before you're going to apply it. So we have the amount slider on the top and then we have the brush control panel. We can do the lightening or dodging, darkening or burning, and then we can erase the effect from any part of the image. So let's start with the lighten. Now what you can do here, you can adjust the size of your brush. You can also adjust the softness of the brush and then you can adjust the strength of the brush. Now let's start nice and low and with the amount on 100, we can now paint over the areas we want to make brighter. So let's say that we want to make this tree brighter. Also a little bit of the clouds here and maybe some of the rocks and maybe a little bit here as well. Now, once we finish, we're going to do the darkening or the burning. Now you can use the X on your keyboard to move between the different brushes or you can just click on the darken on your brush control panel. Now again, we can adjust the size, softness and strength. So let's start nice and low somewhere around 15 or 16. And let's paint over the areas we want to make a little darker. So definitely the part of the reflection here. And I think we still a little bit too strong. So let's bring the strength to 10. Adjust the size of our brush. And for that, I can use the bracket keys on my keyboard and just paint over the areas I want to make a little bit darker. So again here, maybe a little bit on the forest, make it a little bigger and adjust it here. And again, maybe a little bit over the actual reflection, a little bit more over the trees here and maybe a little more in the corner here. Now, once you're done with the darkening, what you can do then, you can jump into your amount slider and adjust it to see how much of the effect you want to apply to your image. What you can also do is to use a one dodge and burn tool for just the lightening and one dodge and burn tool for the darkening. So that way you have a better control over the amount slider. Now, if you're not happy with any of the parts you have painted in, make sure that you use the erase button, just click on it, keep the softness and strength on, you can adjust the size and just paint over the area you want to remove. Once you're done with the tool, as always, you can just close it, apply it to the image, and if you need to revisit it and adjust it, it's going to be stored in your edits tab, which you can access by clicking on the edits on the top of your main toolbar. Now, before I'm going to let you go, there is one more update worth mentioning, and that's the possibility of exporting PNG images in 8-bit and 16-bit format. To do that, we're going to go back into our main toolbar, and then we right click on our image and click on export. Inside of the export, as always, you can adjust the name and location of the file. However, we're going to be focusing on the format. Let's change the format to PNG. And here in a PNG, you can now adjust the depth from 8 to 16 bits. So there you have it. Those are your Luminar Neo 1.2.0 updates. I hope you're going to enjoy them. If you're interested more in HDR photography, make sure you check out our HDR Merge Minute series, which is available on our channel. If you want to learn more about how to use the Dodge and Burn tool, look out for the new video coming out soon. And finally, if you have any question about this video or Luminar Neo, make sure you leave your questions in the comments of this video. And now it's time to get your gift. If you want to get access to our Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, all you need to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar gift. And there you can download the cheat sheet and start to use it right away. And there you have it. So I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share our video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this.
For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.